What the heck is going on with the Green Zone Project? I wonder what the odds are of it ever coming to pass. Greetings, everyone. This is the Gardening Snail of Livingston, California, just trying to keep the community informed and local government as honest as possible. This is part two of a two-part series about the March 2023 invoice from Whitebrenner LLP. In part one, we went over the hours billed for general municipal and human resources. In part two, we are going to look at what we were billed for Public Records Act requests, water, sewer, solid waste, community development, cannabis, police, and the Gallo subdivision. On this page, we see what we were billed for public records requests for information about benefit summaries and renewals, towing service contract, and getting a copy of the invoice for January. On the second page, we see multiple requests for solid waste franchise records, an alum data request, and a review of the bid tabulation for well number eight. We also see that all the hours billed by Juliet Vaughn have been redacted. Attorneys Vaughn's specializations include land use, planning, environmental assessments, and development agreements. Moving on to water, I would expect water-related items to be factored into the next time there is a rate study and we go through the Proposition 218 process to raise water rates. However, as you can see here, all the charges on this page have been redacted. We're not allowed to know what these charges were for, but we will likely be expected to pay for them as part of future water rates. There is another redaction on this page, a rather large one. In addition to a couple of items about the failure of well number 14 and needed repairs. We can tell by looking at the detail that all of Carrie Fuller's entries and all of Christian Smith's entries have been redacted. I also want to point out that while General Municipal is billed at $200 an hour, water is billed at $275 per hour. Carrie Fuller's specialties include environmental law, water, and land use. Christian Smith's specialties include natural resources, environmental, municipal law, and litigation. With over $3,000 worth of charges for water bill related expenses that we're not allowed to know what they were for. Sewer is also billed at the higher rate of $275 per hour, although on this invoice there are no redactions. On this part of the bill that we're paying $275 an hour to figure out what to do about a generator replacement at the wastewater treatment plant. If you've been following along with these invoice videos, you will recall that the generator replacement was considered a non-urgent need by the attorneys back in February. Personally, I would think the people in the Public Works Department who do the job day in and day out would have a better handle on how urgent the need would be for a backup generator. But that's just my opinion as a resident who lives here. Let's move on to solid waste. Charges for solid waste would be something we would expect to roll into the next rate analysis and Proposition 218 process for sanitation, the part of the bill that we understand is for garbage. Again, solid waste is billed at the higher rate of $275 per hour and all items have been redacted. On to community development, which is billed at $200 per hour. Items in community development, if not passed through to a project developer or grant, will most likely end up having to come out of the general fund. Here we see two items completely redacted and one item partially redacted. Of what we can see, there is an item about a business park project, the housing element, and about a AAA car wash joint use agreement. 5.5 hours adding up to $1,100. Most of the hours billed on this invoice for community development are by Josh Varinsky, whose specialties include planning and zoning law, subdivision map act, CEQA, and development agreements. Moving on to cannabis, which is billed at the highest rate of $375 per hour. 
There's an awful lot of analyzing and conferring going on here about things like city regulations, environmental comments about the Green Zone project, which is the only ongoing cannabis project that I know of at the moment. Agencies kicking in their two cents about the project include the California Department of Fish and Wildlife and the Department of Cannabis Control. Here we have a nearly five hour conference regarding the Commercial Cannabis Business Code in the Green Zone Project, along with analyzing correspondence about the Green Zone Project and the status and the direction of the project, plus a couple of redactions. I noticed Nubia Goldstein has 3.3 hours in on this part of the invoice. Most of those hours are hidden under the redactions. Her specialties include Brown Act, conflict of interest, election law, and land use matters. Then there is Barbara A. Brenner. Her specialties include permitting, regulatory compliance, transactional and litigation matters involving water and water quality. This time around, the grand total is 11.8 hours and $4,225. I want to point out here that the Green Zone project has been on again, off again, on again, off again since at least June of 2020, if not earlier. And heaven only knows how many thousands of dollars the city has paid out on this project. And at this moment, I have no idea if any of it has been recouped from the developer yet or if it ever will be. Next up, police. As you can see, there are a couple of redactions, an item about the shooting range, an item about sober grad night, and conferring about replacing a detective vehicle. Adding up to $260 on this invoice. Now let's talk about the Gallo subdivision project. That one has been going on for quite a while, it seems like. This item is also billing the city at the highest rate of $375 per hour. Total professional services hours here are 3.8 for a grand total of $1,425. Most of the hours billed for the Gallo subdivision are by Joss Varinsky, whose specialties again include planning and zoning law, subdivision map act, CEQA, and development agreements. If the totals being charged for the Gallo subdivision are not covered by either fees, a grant, or otherwise by the developer, guess which fund ends up getting to eat the balance? Just out of curiosity, if any of you out there happen to know anything about what is going on with the Green Zone project, dropping a comment would be appreciated. If you like what I do here, please follow me on Facebook and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And remember, editorial content is my own as a long-term resident of Livingston and does not represent the views and opinions of the City Council or the City of Livingston itself and does not hold itself out to be any kind of legal advice.